Hello and welcome to another Body and Legged Garage video. Sorted. Right, what we're going to do today, if you're like me, sick and tired of your tools going rusty. Now, depending on where you are in the world, depending on how much money you've got, if you're Jay Leno and in the More Money Than Sense Club, this might not really apply to him. But to us normal people, now, depending on where you are in the world, you know, some tools and just your climate can make your tools go rusty and even expensive tools, I don't even mean cheap tools, even the expensive tools do do this and it's really frustrating when you spend the money you spend on them and then the next minute they're going rusty and they look horrible. They still work but they don't particularly look very nice. Now we have a vice grips here as you can see which is just very rusty and we have a spanner. Now this spanner um, I've left it in kind of a place to go rusty on purpose. It's just kind of a, a cheap spanner, but you get the idea of what it's going to look like now and when we finish. Now, we have a few parts in front of us. Very, very simple. We're going to use electrolysis to basically take away the rust. Now, what I have, and it's going to be very, very simple, just a normal tub. Got this, got two for a fiver, so very, very cheap. And we had a bit of rebar left over from a house build and it just happens to be absolutely perfect length to fit into and I'm going to make like a frame. Now you don't have to go down this route, it's just I happen to, I might as well use this because I've got it. You can just use any kind of like even rebar or metal, anything kind of solid and you can just put it just down there in four corners or you can even maybe put one in the middle here so you can have three along this side and three along this side doesn't really matter as long as you have some sort of metal in there I'm doing it this way just because it's the bits I have and I've literally just cut up a couple so I'm gonna have one sitting in there another sitting on the far side and with these bars I'm gonna weld them in the middle or just down there just like that I'll show you once I've actually, if I put this up this one, you might see it a bit easier. Once we've actually um, done it, I'm not going to show you the welding. Sean's going to learn how to weld. So there's no point in me showing you that, but you're going to get the idea. You'll see what it looks like when we've finished. And what I've also got is just these offcuts. I'm going to use these as little handles, which I'm going to weld here and here. So that's essentially it. Once I get it welded, we'll turn the camera back on and we'll go into the, into the rest of it. As you can see, we've finished welding the frame and this is what it looks like. Right, the only reason, you don't have to weld it, the only reason I'm welding it is because I have a welder. And if you don't weld it, and like I said, you put the, you just put sticks in down, you have to connect them together. They all have to be connected together. So this way, it means I don't particularly have to use any wires. If you put them down in each corner, you're going to have to get some sort of wire to join them all up together. So I just happen to weld it because we have a welder and it's just simpler for me. So you know, there's loads of different ways. As you can see, it's just a very simple frame. I've got two little handles here and all this does is this just slots into there. It's a bit tight, but that's okay. Now, so we have our frame in our bucket. The reason why I've got a couple of handles here because this is where I'm going to attach one of my cables to. Again, we'll go through that in a minute. And what you need to do is make sure there's a couple of different ways you can suspend the actual tool. What needs to happen is the tool you're trying to get all the rust off basically needs to be in the middle of the actual tank. Now, you cannot use something metal and put something metal across the metal because that will cause you big problems. You can use something metal provided it's not touching the inner frame. Or you can use wood. Uh, I'm just going to use wood, so I'm going to put a piece of wood over there with uh, this suspended on it with a piece of wire. So you can imagine that's kind of like that inside it and it's going to do the magic we need it to do. Yes, we are now cooking with Budget and Leggett. What we need is sodium carburate. Now, I don't have any. I think you can get it in some uh, washing detergents, I think, but... I can only get sodium bicarbonate, carbonate even. Now, what I've managed to find with a bit of research and uh, looking at a few videos and also talking to a friend of mine who is like a chemist type person. Um, now, this should work from what I can tell. This is just um, soda, uh, bread soda, which is 
sodium bicarbonate. If I heat it up enough and let all the gas out or let all the, the water and gas out, it should turn into um, sodium carburate, which will be good enough for what I need. It wouldn't be pure, but it'd be good enough for what we basically need. So I've got 500 grams here. I'm just going to shove all this in. I'm actually going to go for a bigger pot. The reason is I think it's going to be easier to allow all the crap to get out. Now, make sure you're well ventilated, the wind is open. I'm going to turn the fan on in a second. I'm not going to do it yet. What I'm going to do is just let that get the camera in. Just going to let that heat up. Once it heats up to around 200 degrees, I think that's what it is. It should start kind of we should start see it kind of um, not smoking, but kind of bubbling almost, and that's just releasing all the stuff. So I'm just going to have to wait until this reaches that temperature and mix it around. So once it starts reaching that temperature, I'll turn the camera back on and uh, we'll continue. Sorted. Fan on. I'm just going to turn the fan on for a second so you can hear me. What kind of happens first is you'll see it kind of clumping together. This is releasing the water and it kind of clumps together. But hopefully you can see this. If I get this right, you'll just see kind of little things shooting up. I don't know if you can see it there in the middle of it. Hopefully the camera's just showing it. There you go. That was a good one. And that's all the stuff, all the, there you go. Now you can really see it. That's what you're looking for. And basically you need to keep doing that until that stops. So all that kind of puffy, puffiness stops. And then we know we've got all the water out and all the other stuff we need to get out. I'm not exactly sure what, but there's a couple of chemicals in there that we're releasing by heating this up. And you can see it there puffing quite nicely. So I just need to keep going. It's been on now for about, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes or so. Um, I'm doing it all at once. Maybe you wouldn't need to do it all at once. You can really see it happening now. So once it's stopped doing that, I don't know how long more it's going to take. And then, there we go, look at that. Oh, it looks cool. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to continue cooking with my two left hand slippers that I've got on. Don't ask me why I've got them on, I just do. And uh, once that stops doing all that, I'll turn the camera back on and we'll uh, show you the next bit. Right, to give you an idea, I've split it into two pots because I think it's just easy when there's not as much in the pot. To, to give you an idea when you know it's done, I've actually found out if you do it this way, it kind of releases the gas too. This is really fluffy, this stuff. This isn't done. This is really fluffy and kind of, really smooth where this has kind of gone a lot harder as you can see that doesn't move nowhere near as much and as you can see look it sticks into place this this is just well it's just so fluffy it, it kind of goes back on itself so that's that's when you know it's actually done so we're done with that one the best thing to do then is once you're done you can see it, it, it goes kind of thicker it's nowhere near as um, fluffy once you've done with it, what we need to do is let it cool down. But we don't want anything to get in it. So you need to put a lid on, and I don't know where the lids are. So I'm just going to shove a wok over the top of it. And what that will do, that will just stop most of the moisture getting in. And that really is essentially it. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in a container. I've got a, a jar here. So just an empty jar, which I'm going to put it in afterwards. And it's nice to have something which you can seal so the moisture can't get in. Like I said, it's not really the end of the world if the moisture does get in, for, especially for what we're using it for. Um, and then tomorrow, which will only be a few seconds for you, I'm going to put this and finish off our rust remover tool. So it. Right, so we're close. So as you can see, I've got some wood and I've just suspended. I just bent three nails. I've got some normal wire, just electric... Uh, electrical wire from a car um, split it so you need to join the three nails together and then we have a point here so all these three are connected the 
whatever you happen to be cleaning is connected to the nails which also is fine the only thing you have to make sure is when you suspend it in the tank it doesn't touch any of the, the the frame or anything you've happened to put in there it has to be completely clear what I'm going to do is I'm only going to do half of the spanner I'm going to kind of show you before and after but as you can see inside there you can see them are just suspended kind of in midair the spanner's touching the bottom but that doesn't matter and the last thing you need is just the old style battery charger and what I mean by that is not the new modern smart ones just kind of the old dumb ones basically the ones with no computers inside that switch off at a certain time um, this one is switchable from 5 amp to 20 amp I'm going to use the 5 amp setting so 5 amp below really is what you want or like a trickle charge almost and it's going to be very simple after that nothing to it so let's get cracking now so essentially what we are going to be doing is once I've filled it with water and put our special powder in which we made yesterday um, what we need to do you've got a black and red lead coming from your charger you need to put the black lead to your bits or whatever you happen to be dipping in your tank which is here and our red lead to our frame now it doesn't matter which side of the frame as long as I get it to the frame uh, but what I'm going to do before I do this, because this has obviously been outside, I'm just going to give this a quick wire brush just to clean it up a little bit. And uh, once I've done that, I'm going to take this outside because this, once this gets going, this is dangerous in the sense of the, I think it's hydrogen and stuff that comes out of this. And if you're not in a well ventilated place, you can have a big bubble, say on the roof. And if you're grinding or anything, it will literally explode. So it is vitally vitally important you have this in a proper ventilated space it's a lovely day outside today so i'm just going to leave this outside and just let it do what it needs to do and then a couple of hours hopefully we should have it sorted so i'm going to quickly whip this out give it a quick wire brush when i turn the camera back on i'll be outside ready to go right i've got 15 liters of water in there and i'm going to put one and a half spoon per five liters so i need four and a half spoons in here one, two, three, four, and a half. Now I need to give that a good mix and to get all dissolved, all the lumps. And as you can see, I haven't put anything in yet, but obviously, you don't want to be doing this you've got um, electricity onto it because that would just be bloody stupid so the next thing I do is just dip this in as you can see I've already tested it to make sure it's okay we're only going to do about half the spanner just to kind of see a before and after making sure that whatever we happen to be in there isn't going to touch this frame and we are okay as regards that next thing we need to do is just power it up you'll know when it's kind of working because you'll see bubbles and you'll kind of see it working and it just depends on what you're cleaning and how bad it is it could take a couple of hours it could take eight or nine hours it just depends but I'm going to leave this in here for maybe two or three hours and just see what happens. So remember, red one goes on our frame and the black one goes to our parts or whatever. Yeah, our parts or whatever you're kind of, kind of doing. Remember, keep it on the smaller trickle charge setting. So before I switch this on, like I said, make sure it's in a really good ventilated area because the bubbles that are coming off are oxygen and hydrogen and obviously that's in the wrong place in a big bubble say in, in your ceiling because obviously everything rises your grinder or doing anything it can go bang so that is kind of essential so I'm just going to double check that everything is fine which it looks fine the other thing is make sure you've got no copper or anything 
in this. It doesn't like copper. And if you're putting a tool in which has got paint on or it's got markings on, then there's a good chance this will rip it off. So you have to be careful what tools you put in. Like some spanners might have an etching, like a black etching. Um, this could possibly take them off. So just be careful what you put in or anything like that because you could end up, your tool will be clean, but you could end up wiping all the markings off it. Now we are plugged in and we're just waiting for bubbles. Now hopefully that's working lovely. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to zoom in enough, but I'll try. I don't know how well you're going to see this because it's outside, but you can start seeing a little bit of bubbling coming off the tools, especially the spanner. Let's zoom out a bit. Hopefully you can see that. I can't see because I'm getting blinded by the sun, which is unusual. But we're bubbling up, so we know we're actually working properly. So I'm just going to leave that here now for a couple of hours and see what happens. Lovely. Right, you'll know you're getting it right when you kind of see all this scummy, browny stuff coming to the top of the water. And I don't know if the camera's picking up, but you can still see it bubbling. Once it stops bubbling, you kind of know you're done. And the beauty with this is, even if it's done and you leave you, you leave something in there, it's not going to affect it. It'll only, it'll only start eating the rust. It won't affect good metal at all. That's been in for about an hour. I'm going to turn it off and just quickly see what these tools look like. And it is important you turn it off. So, let's move that out of the way. And let's just see, after an hour, kind of what we're looking like. Now, you not, might not be able to see, but I'm just wiping. I don't know if I'm getting this on camera. I can't see the sun's that right. I'm just wiping. Well, I'll, I'll just rinse this off with water and I'll see. I've just come inside because of the way the sun is and I can't really see it. But that is after an hour and you can see the difference. This is rusty up here. And this still rusty, but it looks a million times better. And as you can see from the back, which we had no rust, that hasn't affected nothing on that side. So it's amazing just what this can do. So I'm going to leave this back in, I don't know, a couple more hours and we'll see. Simple. Now, just look at the state of that water. It's about four or five hours old, that water. Right, so these tools have been in there about four or five hours. Now, granted, both of these were really, really badly pitted. So you're never gonna get them completely smooth again. But this was just a very quick wire brush. Now, the camera might not pick that up, but it is still pitted. But you can see the difference from me doing that and how rough that is to how smooth this is. Now, that is with the quick wire brush. Same with the vice grips. The vice grips have really come up well. Now you can see, again, this is just as it comes out the, the bath. I've just uh, rinsed it down with water. And again, a quick wire brush on the top. And you can see the difference. All this is kind of black, so you need to get all that out because that's all the crap and shit. And with a wire brush, that will, will take all that out. But you can see the difference it's made on them vice grips. This is the back. So if I wire brush all them, they'll come out new. What I'm gonna do next video, is showing you how to actually nickel plate these which will mean you, it gives you a plate on it it'll be really really shiny and they won't rust again because these will rust again so will this because we're basically taking all, all the coating off but the coating was gone anyway so i'm actually going to nickel plate these to give her a really nice shine now if you've got a buffing wheel again put these on a buffing wheel and they'll come up a million times better as well but with the nickel plate, which I'll show next time, we'll put a, not only will we put a shine on it, we'll also put a protective coat in. So look, hope it helps. Thumbs up and subscribe. Don't forget, check out our shop. Sign up to our new forum. The links are down below. And yeah, hopefully it helps you um, get your, your tools back to kind of how they were again. It's not a miracle cure. So, you know, once if you've got something really badly pitted, don't expect it to, to take it off and it'd be absolutely perfect again because you've got to remember the metal is actually pitted. But with the, with the plating we're going to do next, we'll put like a, a protective coat on it and should be a million dollars. Thumbs up and subscribe. And don't forget, get your hands dirty. See you for the next one.